Hello and welcome to another Train Sim World 2 video. This time we're going to be driving the Class 31 on Northern Transpennine. We're going from Manchester to Ashton Underline. And today I wanted to basically give a few updates as far as the game is concerned. Because there has been a lot happening and I've unfortunately missed it. So, by missed it, I mean that the stuff that I'm going to be talking about isn't strictly out yet. It's not really released to the public, but it is definitely coming out. And there is one update that is very soon to be released, and that is the Arosa line. It's technically called Arosa Lini, or something like that, which is um, based in Switzerland. But I'm just going to be calling it the Arosa line because I think that's what everyone has been uh, calling it unofficially. And also Arosa Lini, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. So I, rather than get it wrong over and over and over again, I'll just call it Arosa line. Because that's, uh, you know, easier. But, um, yeah. So, I would like to say... I am quite excited for it. I'm not going to be uh, picking it up on release day because A, I, I don't have the money. It's not been factored in. So, um, but I am excited for seeing what it's like in the flesh. And I don't have to wait long for that. And neither do you. It's um, coming out on the 25th of March, which is on a Thursday. So, um, if you're excited for it, Get get that date in your calendar because coming out on the twenty fifth of March, which is quite soon after this uh, video. So um, yeah, I, I'd like to also say there is another DLC which has been basically confirmed as coming out, but we don't have an official release date for it. But there are previews. So you, what you can find on the official. Uh, train Simulator channel is you can find previews for a Rosa line, but you can also find previews for Clinchfield Railroad. So if you've been excited for that one as well, which is an American, um, an American route, which is mostly, well, pretty much all going to be freight based, it looks like. Uh, if you're excited for that, you can see the previews on uh, Train Simulator. I haven't seen the previews for um, Clinchfield Railroad. Railroad, but there have been a few uh, articles related to it as well on Dovetail, so uh, if you want to go see those, please go check it out. Uh, Arosa Line, like I said, I'm not going to be picking up on release day. I will be doing some research into whether it's a good DLC to pick up soon or later, and uh, I'll basically try and let you know, but I'm not going to be getting it on release day. So just be aware of that. Also, uh, as for Clinchfield, Clinchfield I'm still not interested in. Uh, that may change as time goes on, but at the moment I'm not really interested in that one either. So, um, yeah. Uh, Russell Line, it looks nice. It sounds interesting. It's just, I do have a little bit of a reservation with uh, buying it because it does seem very niche as it were it's got i think the speed limit on it is fairly low which um yeah traveling at low speeds isn't really my cup of tea to be honest it might be that i have to drive at low speeds and it might not be i'm just gonna look and see what other people have done as far as videos that's my main concern the rest of it though looks fine so uh, we'll just see about Arosa line. Now obviously I would like to quickly point out that this video is part of it, the uh, sort of main series of videos that I'm doing. So this isn't a request for anybody and I have realised a little bit that it would be a little bit difficult for people to find requests and also mainline videos. This is a mainline video and as such it's not related to the requests or the the associated 24 um, services challenge that I'm doing so 
you know, I should go on after this video and basically make some changes and also to label the the videos that are part of the uh, request series as such and those will be put into a playlist basically called requests and also the mainline things are going to be put into a playlist called main videos instead it's basically me changing the names of a couple of things but other than that not very much difference so yeah that's an improvement that should be made class 465 by the way going past and I haven't really talked much about what I'm actually driving. I'm driving the Class 31. I've also got a Class 101 on the back, the uh, two-car unit. And that's basically the only passenger, um, passenger enabled thing that the Class 31 can haul as far, as far as what I've got in the game. So I believe if I had another DLC I might be able to get it to tow, um, not tow, pull. Uh, other passenger cars, but as such, because I've only got T's Valor Line and a couple of other things, uh, I only have the Class 101 as a passenger enabled thing for the Class 31. Which is a bit of a shame, but that's just the way it goes. I mean, if I had to choose what I'm actually pulling today, I would have chosen uh, other passenger carriages. Alright, the next thing I wanted to cover is all to do with what I'm interested in purchasing um, lately. So uh, obviously a Rosa line is on that list from earlier on, however that one might take a little bit of thinking. It takes a lot more thinking because it's not actually a route that is out yet. So it will take longer for me to do research on that one than uh, than the other ones. The other ones that I'm going to be talking about have probably got plenty of material that I can use for research on them. When I say research, I'm basically saying I'm looking into what's actually there content-wise and whether or not it actually suits what I'm going for in uh, videos or and whatnot, whether it's going to be something that I would play a lot, basically. Because, I will admit this, I do like to get my money's worth when it comes to DLCs and, and other purchases, especially when it comes to video games. Video games, to me, aren't really physical things. So, it's not like I collect the Steelbook edition of whatever video game that's out. It's not as if I collect a version that's super special. Um, or everything I have is digital, which means that especially I do need to feel like I'm getting my money's worth when I make a purchase, because on the PlayStation Store, you don't actually get any refunds. So, um, yeah, that's the part that's a bit, uh. And if I was on Steam or something, then I could probably get a refund for something that I don't like after about... I think it's about an hour, <coughs> an hour of gameplay, um, so as Steam refunds are concerned, uh, that's the parameter, so if you play it for less than an hour and then you decide you want your money back, then uh, you can get a refund, I think, I think that's how it works, pretty much. Uh, but on the PlayStation Store, no, no refunds whatsoever, so uh, yeah, I do need to feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And Arosa Line is there, but also there's Isle of Wight and uh, West Somerset Railway. I'll start with West Somerset Railway. Uh, West Somerset Railway was originally released a long time back, quite a long ways back in Trains in World History. And with that there's probably a lot more material to use as uh, reference uh, online for me to research. So I look into certain aspects when I'm going to make a purchase. When I'm going to make a purchase, I look into the route itself. So would I drive along this route in videos or off camera? A lot. Is it a route that's going to be <coughs> really difficult to get used to? Is it a route that's going to be just boring? Because that's one of the things that turns me off from uh, LGV uh, Marseille to Avignon. Uh, that one 
the route is pretty flat and boring uh, most of the way it's a very long route and um, you know you're obviously going to be mostly seeing it from a high speed train perspective but I wouldn't take any other locomotives realistically on that route other than high speed trains because tra <coughs> sorry, traveling along at 90 miles an hour which is the speed limit that's imposed on most of the trains that I have along that long route that's going to take a long time and there aren't many stations to stop at I don't think so um, yeah that's why that one's a bit iffy for me but with the uh, West Somerset Railway there are more stations to stop at and it's not really too long of a route uh, granted the other thing that really annoys me is the speed limit the speed limit is set to 28 miles an hour it's a heritage line um, basically a um, how do I put it, a preserve part of railway history and laws in the UK say that if it's not part of the national network, which it isn't then it can only be limited to 28 miles an hour maximum so that's annoying because basically when I'm playing that I'm not going to be sticking to the speed limit because I've no need to why would I do that? it's a video game um, I wouldn't get any action points for doing that but I don't really care about the points, it's just a bit annoying that it wants to limit you even on scenario mode so yeah I can understand why they do it for services because that's realism, that's realistic but as far as scenario designer goes I don't know, I don't really like the way that they still limit you in that I hope that one day we get some sort of improvement so that we can artificially raise the speed limit because sometimes I think it's just too low for what is possible um, but you know that's just a that's just a hope of mine it's probably not going to happen just saying I do hope it does happen but um, the locomotives that actually come with the uh, Great Western Railway I believe I've already got I think the Class 09 is the only one that's really new but even then it's basically the same as the Class 08 which I've already got so uh, yeah and there's also the Class 47 in there which is in a different colour scheme and it's a nice livery it's a nice looking thing I will say that and uh, that's probably that's probably another reason to justify me spending the money but there is a little bit of a thing it is £20 full price and at the moment it isn't on sale on the PlayStation Store at least so um, yeah it's going to be £20 to buy a route and then to add insult to injury to get the two locomotives that I wanted to get because you know they lock it behind it which is a bit annoying but I understand why they do it um, to add insult to injury it's not just £20 I'm spending well basically about 30 something pounds pretty much uh, 20, no actually 40 40 so it's going, gone up um, it hasn't it hasn't increased in price. I'm just saying that my original es estimate has gone up. But yeah, for the class 33 and 52, those are 11 pounds something each when they're not on sale. Now, if by some chance that they do go on sale um, around about the same sort of time that I want to pick up West Somerset Railway, I'll basically watch this space. Okay, watch this space on West Somerset. Because it's not on sale now, neither are the locomotives, I don't think, that you can get with it. So, um, because of that, I'll just say, watch this space, and if, by any chance, I have enough money to buy stuff for West Somerset Railway, and I think it's worth it after some research. In other words, if it goes on sale, it'll incline me even more, but I'm just saying, it's, it's going to be an impulse thing, mainly. Uh, I may not even get it at all just saying um, one I'm it's very very likely that I'm going to get Isle of Wight now as I said before in the video my budget this month does not allow me to buy any more DLCs because I simply just don't have the money to spare but when I actually do have money on the 7th of April and um, if Isle of Wight is still on sale uh, then I'll probably get it 
probably. Uh, Isle of Wight is one that is iffy. At full price it's £20, now on sale on PlayStation Store it's £13. So, yeah, we've gone for a reduction in basically £7, which is, you know, it's, it's a good saving. And with the route itself, realistically, I do think originally it should have been more like 15 maybe, because that's just in my opinion. People will say that it's worth different amounts because that's how people work, you know, with um, anything in reality people have their own opinions on what something is worth to them or in their opinion. So um, there's a right way to do prices and there's a wrong way to do prices. The wrong way to do prices is to assume that your price is going to be suitable for everybody else and the right way to do it is to work out the value of it realistically speaking for the vast majority of people. There's a right way and a wrong way. And uh, I believe that they've gone for the right way. It's £20 full price. Which is still a bit too much in my opinion. But still at least it's not... At least it's not like full, full on £25 worth. You know, that would be... That would be quite something. On paper, Isle of Wight does not look like a good deal. With Isle of Wight, what you're getting is one locomotive and one, obviously the route that comes with it, Isle of Wight, but Isle of Wight is the line that they've modelled is only 8 miles long. The part of the line, the part of the network that goes on the Isle of Wight, on THE Isle of Wight. But, um, yeah, so that's the thing that is a bit iffy, because it's only 8, mile of, uh, eight miles of route, one locomotive, it doesn't sound like a great deal for £20 full price, so now it's on sale, I think it's worth that price, I think it's worth £13. Before £20, it, well, it, in my opinion, wasn't, I don't think, not to me anyway. And um, yeah, I'll see about getting Isle of Wight because it's only £13, and I guess I can make, I, I can probably do that next month, but I'll just. I'll just have to see, you know. Either way, we are almost at the end of our journey. I did want to cover something really quick that, that it sort of got in the way at the end of the journey itself. The video, this video is complete, by the way. What I'm about to talk about doesn't really affect the content of the video per se. What it does affect is the fact that the, the level, the, the journey didn't actually finish properly. It actually gave me a what gave me a uh, a failure signal passed at danger, which is a bit strange because I could have sworn that I wasn't moving, and I don't think that I passed the the light anyway. No, I didn't. Um, so I'm guessing what happened is one of the AI trains set up, set it off because they had a problem. I think that's probably what's happened. And uh, oh. There's the uh, London Underground stock there. Program that to run. We are a scenario designer, obviously, so we can do whatever we, wa we want. But, um, yeah, service failure signal passed at danger. Don't know why it did that. I'm guessing it's because of an AI train, but it was a real shame because, you know, if it, if it had happened a bit later on, I would have finished it, finished the whole level. I mean, I, I just locked the doors by the time it happened. You can see what happens on here. So I'm very clearly stopping, you know, here. The red signal is in front of me. Uh, or the green one. It's green at the moment. So the signal is in front of me. I'm, I'm not moving from this spot. It's over there, you see. So I'm guessing it must have been an AI train issue, which is a bit unfortunate that it has to stop you. I would, I do wish that instead of stopping you with a service failure, it just, it, it basically stops itself, it, the AI train removes itself from the whole situation if it goes wrong. I think that's a better alternative. Whether or not that's easier or harder to do it the way that the, you know, easy or hard to do, uh, remains another matter. But thanks for watching this video anyway, I hope you learned some things. 
got a few updates out of this video. Uh, this one will be available with a no commentary version if you want to watch it because I think it's quite as atmospheric. And uh, we'll see. I'll see you in the next video. There you go. Service failed. Silly thing. Didn't actually affect anything really. We finished the journey anyway. I'll see you around. Have a good day.